Hi guys, in this tutorial we're going to work our way through the concepts of facial palsy and in particular discriminating a upper motor neuron lesion from a lower motor neuron lesion. Let's start by covering some important terminology. Lesion means a region in an organ or tissue which has been damaged through the process of injury or disease. Palsy means paralysis or the loss of the ability to move. Contralateral means the opposite side of the body to the lesion, whilst ipsilateral refers to the same side of the body as the lesion. Perfect! Now with these terms in our arsenal, let's begin with our brain and its two hemispheres. Next, we add in our brainstem with three components, the midbrain, pons and medulla. The size of the pons is disproportionately larger in this diagram as it is the location of the seventh nerve or facial nerve nuclei. The facial nerve is responsible for the muscles of facial expression which, as we will see, can be used clinically to help discriminate whether a facial palsy is due to an upper or lower motor neuron lesion. The facial nucleus is conceptually split into two halves. The top half provides the fibres that innervate the muscles of facial expression of the upper face while the lower half of the nucleus provides the fibres that innervate the muscles of facial expression of the lower face. The upper half of the nucleus receives innervation from not only the contralateral motor cortex, but also from the ipsilateral motor cortex. This is very relevant clinically, which we will come to. The lower half of the facial nucleus, however, is only innervated by the contralateral motor cortex. If we now consider our face, and add in an imaginary line which demarcates the upper and lower muscles of facial expression. The upper half of the facial nucleus provides a lower motor neuron which supplies the upper facial expression muscles, whilst the lower half of the facial nucleus on each side provides a lower motor neuron which supplies the lower facial expression muscles. So, if there is a facial palsy due to an upper motor neuron lesion, what would you expect to see clinically? paralysis of the contralateral lower facial musculature, which would present itself through an inability to smile on the affected side. Importantly, the upper facial musculature is not involved because the upper half of the facial nucleus receives bilateral motor cortex innervation, so clinically the patient should still be able to raise both eyebrows. How about if there is a facial palsy due to a lower motor neuron lesion of the facial nerve. What would you expect to see clinically? Paralysis of the ipsilateral upper and lower facial musculature. This would present itself through an inability to raise the eyebrow or smile on the side of the lesion. Great! So hopefully now the clinical features of a patient's facial weakness will help you discriminate whether the problem is due to an upper or lower motor neuron lesion. To help consolidate this knowledge, this tutorial will conclude by presenting several different clinical presentations of facial palsy. The aim is to first identify the abnormal clinical features and then identify whether there is an upper or motor neuron lesion and on what side. You will have 10 seconds for each. From me, however, this is goodbye. Thanks for watching.